Hello, welcome back to Tony Dock Station. So what I'm doing now is wiring in the first uh, detector unit, which is uh, the DigiKeys DR4088, and the first one is the LocoNet, and the second one is the uh, S88 network. So, as you can see, I've only done one, um, but I'm gonna explain a bit more about how the uh, system works, as uh, I wasn't very clear in the first video where I explained it. So, let's go first of all to the trusty instructions. So there's very uh, many different ways of doing this, but what I'm using is a two rail system, not a three rail system. So first of all, let's look at this top one, and then at the bottom, there's a, a explanation of using the boosters, which I'm not. So don't need to worry about that. This is the one that I need. So. It is relatively simple. Now I'm using a common positive and not a common negative. Um, it's just the way I've decided to do it. I think it makes much more sense and I know a lot of other people have done this. So the way that this works is you've got your controller system, which in this case isn't an actual controller, it's the computer control system. That sends and receives loco net data to the detector unit. Now, it's not sending power down this network cable. This is just sending information. The actual power is done by the, uh, the screw terminals. So your computer system will send your positive and negative out to your bus wire. And your bus wire connects to the track, but here they've just connected directly to the track. So your positive and negative coming out. Now, as I said, I'm using a common positive. So this wire here on the right is my positive and this wire here on the left is my negative so i send a wire out to the positive uh, bus um, and then from that i take a spur off and a positive goes in to the common uh, of the detector unit so let's just have a look at that now unfortunately i made a, a silly mistake of just rushing and using the wrong color cable just pretend this is a red cable and make it a bit more easy to understand. So I've got my positive bus wire. I've got a spur coming off of that and into the common terminal um, of the detector unit. Now what this does is it takes that common positive and it distributes it to these 16 terminals. So I've just looped it round and in to both so it sends power from that terminal sends to those eight and that terminal sends to those eight and then these are all have positive dcc's and then you send for each block you send one up so that's gone to block one and then the negative so let's actually not confuse that so we've sent the positive from terminal one and that comes up to the positive rail here so that's i've got my effectively it's connected to the positive bus wire but just via the decoder unit so what this then does is as a train goes over and draws power here it draws power from terminal one and this unit goes oh wait a minute so we've got a train running over this section so when and it sends the data to say right terminal one is now drawing power from the uh, the bus so that's how the computer will know where a train is, because it goes, oh, we've got power being drawn from number one. So the power basically comes into here and is distributed. This is basically a distribution board. And then the uh, terminal one train goes over and it goes, oh, so it takes the power from the common, sends it to one, and it says, right, I'll tell the computer via this data that I'm using to terminal one to, to, to draw power. So the negative then is here, and that simply just drops down and connects into the negative of the bus. It doesn't go through any controller at all, or any of the other hardware. It just connects straight to the negative of the bus, and that then gets sent back to the negative on the uh, DCC computer control. So that's how we get a complete circuit. So I hope that makes sense. You've got your main power coming in out of the computer control to a positive bus that is then spurred into the uh, detector unit the detector unit 
distributes the power across the 16 terminals and there's the, those then go to each individual block and then the negative for that block just connects straight back to the negative bus so that's how you get your circuit and then all this is a little computer in here or little brains in here goes right we've got power being drawn from uh, terminal one it tells via data back to the computer controller to know that that's where that is okay so i've just finished wiring the first 16 blocks so as i sort of explained earlier you've got the, the red cable uh, the each individual positive rails and then that black cable is the is the common power supply so we've got common power coming from the positive bus wire into there which is distributed along the 16 outputs that then sends the positive rail out um, and yeah so i need to tidy the wires up but they all go off to the retrospective blocks um, and my very very crude drawing here just so i know which block is wired up to which terminal um, so for example let's see this rail here is this sort of side in here so that's to block four um, and then the negative for that block which is here just comes down that's the negative there so the red goes in to number four uh, the negative then just connects to the negative of the dcc bus as normal so basically this is um sort of where you would normally just connect a positive to the positive it's it's coming in here and via this computer up to the up to the rail um so yeah so it's the first 16 done what i've got to do now is get the other one and that will be for the the dock side of the layout and then this uh sends a network cable out into this so that the data from this is then sent to that and then through the the main low connect cable back to the um uh, layout so think of it sort of like this i've only got two so the data is then sent from that through this and then back to the controller so that is that's what's going to happen there okay so the other uh track detector i've just screwed in under the baseboard so it's geographically it's under the dock area under there sort of in the middle of where most of the other blocks are so again just keeping the uh, the red droppers um as a short distance as possible so i'll take a feed from the positive bus wire into the middle terminal and then start running the droppers out and then the network cable run out of there and back to the other um, dropper detector over there and then that then runs out that black cable to the uh, DR5000. Okay so I've now finished wiring all of my track droppers into the detection so I've done the station side and I've also done underneath on the, uh, the dock side. Um, all wired in. So now, uh, as I just showed you, I'm working on my uh, my point motors. So I've showed you the, the diagram before. Well, I think in one of my videos, this is just the the two channel one. I've obviously got an eight channel one mounted under the baseboard. So I've got the five cables going to each point motor, which will be the three for so the channel three for the actual switching of the motor. And then the, um, the two for the frog, um, as I already have the frog connected, I just need to send the the two out to the uh, to the track for the DCC side of the point motor, if that makes sense. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. So I've got my three core wire for. The, the switching that's already sort of limbed up and I've got the blue and the yellow for the uh, the DCC frog switching so I'll basically run from say each one of these here I'll run a bit and it will sort of loom up through to the 
the point with a solenoid decoder and then they'll just get wired in like that. Okay, so I've got a slight change of plan as why the when I was talking about the frog part of uh, these decoders, what they do is they need an input rather than an output. So they um they're independent frog control. Whereas my frogs are actually being controlled by the uh, point motors themselves, so I don't need to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm just running the, the actual switching part that runs through to the, uh, the point motor. And the blue and the yellow is going to come back from each point. So that uh, each box here I'll have eight blues and eight yellows and then they will all connect up via a chop block and then one uh, thick cable to the D66 bus to give me the um, the frog rather than doing loads of individual uh, drops over from each point to the bus wire. It just helps keep that minimum. So that's, uh, that's the workaround. Okay, so I've done the first four point motors. Um, and as I mentioned, obviously I'm doing the, uh, the frog polarity through the actual seat point motor. So here's an example of one of the chop blocks. I've got the, the three cables going in for the switching and then the blue and yellow going off for the frog polarity. Um, and then basically what I've done is for the four points there, the, uh, the positive and the negatives all combine and then go into one cable which then connects to the uh, the bus wire so rather than having um, lots of uh, individual drops onto the bus wire just makes it a little bit more easier and um, obviously the chop blocks make it easier to swap round if um, you know the polarities are wrong and things like that when I come to uh, programming the motors uh, and again with, uh, with these as well if I need to swap the reds around, it's just a quick case of uh, getting a screwdriver and um, changing them out. So those are the first four. Um, and then obviously what I need to do is run the uh, the bus power into that, but I'll do that at the end. Um, so obviously I've got four more to do on that side, um, which will be for this uh, motors down there. And then um, I've then got a load more of those actual units to put in and wire in but um it's uh i keep telling myself it's hard work my arms are aching but it's uh, it's going to be worth it and then once this is done all the wiring is done um so i'm actually getting closer but it's uh i still got a way to go yet okay so i've now finished wiring in all eight point motors along the first section and I've also done the um uh, where is it there the uh frog feed so all the points along here apart from the three way because that's gonna be on the next one but I've got one two three four and one two three four they're all wired up and all the frogs are wired up and everything so I've just got to do the next one, which will be one, two, then these four. There's another one around there, and those two. A total of eight will go into one um, decoder, point decoder there, and then I've got eight more into another point decoder there, and then the last two into the last two-way point decoder. So. It's um, it is long and tedious. I'm not gonna lie. It is um, starting to uh, get a bit uh, repetitive now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here for this video. Um, so the next video I will have um, I will have already have done all this because there's not much to show you other than the um, the three points uh, for the. That's three wires for the actual point switching goes into the decoder um, and then they just run into each point and I've tried to tidy this up as best I can but wires will be wires at the end of the day um, and then the uh, frogs it's the, it's the same as the seat wiring there's nothing new there so the um, instead of just connecting each individual 
point to the bus. I've just linked four points together um, just to make it a little less wiring. So I won't bother showing you me wiring all the rest of this. So when you come back uh, in the next video, everything should be wired up. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. That is the end of the, the wiring part. Um, so the next video will probably be me track testing, hopefully just making sure everything's good. Um, and then any sort of error correction. So I've, I hope that this sort of, I think it's three videos I've done on the wiring now. I hope that it makes sense. I hope that you sort of get how it's all working. Um, but if not, please leave comments and questions and I will, I will do my absolute best to answer. So I'll just do a quick summary to recap. I hopefully make a bit more sense. So here is the DR5000. That is the, um, the DCC controller effectively. And then I've got my bus wire here. So positive and negative, so they come into, into that. Um, and then that's feeding the uh, the bus wire there from the track output. So the positive and negative comes out of that onto the DCC uh, bus, which is running around the entire layout. Then I've got this cable here, which is connected to the first point decoder, and that will connect into the Loconet T, and that goes into there. And that is just receiving data. It's not sending power, it's just receiving data. And then there will be, coming out of this, a network cable, which I've got uh, a long one. And that will run around the layout. And that will go into, uh, excuse me, the um, point decoder here which is under this point, and then they are effectively the same thing. So that's how they're connected. So they're, they're daisy chained, and then it's this cable that goes into there. And what those are doing is, as I've mentioned again, they're, um, they've got a feed from the DCC bus, which goes into the, the common terminal, and then that distributes the power along the 16 outputs, and that's on the other one as well. And then as the, these then go to each individual block, and then as power is drawn from a block, this works out what block has been uh, having power drawn and sends that information to the controller so it knows where trains are. Um, and then the blocks, as I've explained before, are sort of sections of track, and then all the sort of little individual bits of track that aren't part of the block they are just connected up to the DCC bus as normal droppers so they just go to the bus wires normal droppers so they've got their own power any sort of section that isn't part of a block effectively and that is that is the track then obviously the laptop will plug into that and send the, uh, the data the DCC data through that then the points underneath the point decoders they have a power feed in straight from the DCC bus so that's just the positive and negative into that and that will then as a point is uh, requested to be thrown it will work out which one is which and will throw the point via the point switching which is just you know left right and the common and they go to a point, and then let's just pick this point here for example. So you've got the two switches and the common, which throws that seep there, excuse the blurriness. And then the frog is switched. So the frog for this is, sorry I know this is a bit, I'm trying to make it a bit zoomed out. So the frog for that point is there, and that's connected to the seep, and then the positive and negative at DCC for the seep is then sent through into this chop block, which is then connected to the bus wire, how it gets its uh, frog switching there. So that is the, the nuts and bolts 
of the wiring. Um, and when you uh, when you come back, I'll have finished wiring in these uh, these remaining decoders because there's no point in me showing you, as I said, you know, what I've already done. And then the that's the the main wiring, I'll, and I'll leave that as the end of the wiring uh, sort of section. The only other wiring that will then be left to do under the baseboard is for the signals, which are going to be a separate video altogether. But that is literally going to be a feed from the bus into the signal decoders, which I've showed you before, and then they just uh, they they're wiring. But I'll do a, a separate video on those because the, there's a lot more signals to go in yet. But that is the wiring. So I I, I hope it makes sense, as I've said. I, I think it's it is straightforward. You just gotta get your head around it and read the uh, the instructions and all the bits and bobs that come with it. Uh, and it, it it is honestly simple. And when when you're doing it, uh, you know, explaining it, I'm, I'm not that great at explaining things. But as I said, hopefully that at least makes sense. So also don't forget, I've got my uh, 1,000 subscriber video uh, competition running at the moment. So make sure you enter that, watch the uh, the video to be a part of that. Um, and make sure you get your entries in before the 5th of July. Um, so the the questions you've got to answer are how many points do I have? And um, a couple of people have asked me to clarify three ways. Obviously I have two point motors, but that is one point. It, it has two junctions, uh, sorry, three junctions and two two motors, but that is one point for the purpose of the question. So, you know, for example, one, two, three, four, five, not one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is one point. Um, so, yeah, and the other question is, what is the running number, fleet number, class number of my 47 in the freight line livery? And what is the, the name of that? And it has to be the full name with no spelling errors and the the full number as well. So I'm just looking at the time of this uh, this video. I am starting to waffle on now, so I do apologise. So I'll end it here. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time when hopefully we will get some trains moving. Thanks very much. See you later.